Welcome everybody to the Ryan the Ride Mechanic Show. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about 10 things that mechanics hate about rides. Now get ready. Here we go. If you're watching this, then you obviously love to go to amusement parks and ride on rides, as do most of us. But did you know that the ride mechanics that work there also hate them at the same time? Well, there's a handful of things we hate about things, and I want to go over some of those. So... If you like this type of stuff, make sure you give it a like and uh, offer a subscribe there if you haven't already. And then we'll get right into it right now. Now this list is in no particular order. So I'm going to give you 10 things mechanics don't like about rides. Here we go. Number 10. At the number 10 spot, I'm going to say that nothing is lightweight. On rides, rides are big and heavy. They are made out of steel, steel, and more steel. And the only thing safer than more steel is more steel on top of that. So everything is quite heavy, which means that to do the majority of things on rides, you need two people, three people, four people, maybe a special lifting jig to take something up and lift it and move around the ride. And then when it comes to doing simple things like booster wheel replacements and stuff like that, you need a typical team of people to move things around. And that can get really annoying when it's something as simple as just replacing one component and then you're trying to schedule downtime, it's like, ah, oh, I need three people to do that. And that is a pain. And then that just looks poorly on you because you can't get something done, but you're trying to schedule it and it takes a lot of people to do. It might take a lot of downtime. So weight is a big factor on these things. And if things were light, lightweight, we'd probably do it a lot easier, but they're not. They're big and heavy. Coming at number nine, nothing's easy to fix. By that, I'm talking about ride safety systems. That's the number one thing that breaks down a ride because rides have to be safe. So the thing is that uh, manufacturers do a lot of things to make sure the ride is, sh is safe, and they typically do things like put redundancy in the system and sometimes one, two, three, four forms of redundancy. And then those forms of redundancy communicate and miscommunicate and then they start fighting with each other and it makes a simple situation very complex so they start doing things like in restraint systems when you sit down on the uh, train and you close the restraint and the system says your restraints closed a lot of times that's done with a daisy chain just components linked in series with each other very complex to troubleshoot because it doesn't necessarily tell you where the problem is it just tells you that there's a problem uh, one of the rides i took care of was uh an SLC and the way they made sure the restraints were closed they had a limit switch on the inside that was made when the mechanism locked those limit switches were times all 20 seats and they were daisy chained from one to the other so all we knew is that when they said that the ride wouldn't dispatch we had an open restraint somewhere but we didn't know where it was and that would sometimes eat hours of troubleshooting up especially when the problem became intermittent on the wiring harness of the ride Number eight, rides use a lot of air pressure. And a lot of times those airlines, especially flex lines, tend to break right at the most inconvenient part of the day. Never fails. Hot summer day, the ride's running at maximum capacity and you blow an airline out. And then you gotta go up there, shut it down, figure out where the airline blew, and then go in and find replacement hosing, replacement fittings, and everything else that went along with it to make that repair. Sometimes not as easy as it sounds. Speaking of things that aren't easy as a sound, number seven is the manufacturer used some sort of part that's not available anywhere in the U.S. This happens a lot. Manufacturers use exotic outside manufacturers to build things like pneumatic valves and hydraulic components. And when they fail, you need something from that manufacturer, which is a lot of times overseas. And sometimes you can't get those parts easily or quickly. Sometimes you can find the part, but the manufacturer won't sell it to you because they weren't the original equipment that you're working on. So overseas manufacturers, hard to find parts. It's one of those things that we try to do our best to stock stuff, but sometimes you just don't have the ability to stock everything that the ride needs all the time. Number six, as you work on rides, they take on a bit of a personality. And then you start to learn some of the ins and outs of them. And you know when you service certain areas of the ride that it's going to misbehave afterwards. And then that is a very cringeworthy moment because you know 
by doing something, it's going to cause all sorts of headaches down the road. One thing that is simple adjustments like speeds and cable tension. Those two things right there by themselves will eat up a lot of downtime, especially if you have to adjust something like the cable tension and speed on something like a boomerang. It's a nightmare. Trust me. Number five is maintenance. Maintenance hates maintenance. Yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, the ride specify maintenance at such a high frequency that, uh, but when you take something apart and put it back together, you end up doing damage to components more than it, more than you would if you just left them alone in the first place. So, causing damage to the ride is the maintenance department. Fixing the damage to the ride is the maintenance department. It's a give and take. That's a maintenance department would rather a lower frequency of maintenance on a ride, but that doesn't mean that the safety is up as high as it should be. So they want to keep that frequency higher. So that's going to mean that you're going to replace more things like bearings and springs and things like that, that get damaged when you take stuff apart. Just all part of operating the ride. Number four is coming in and a lot of times maintenance will see the problem, but can't fix it. And now why would you say you could see the problem, but you can't fix it? Because a lot of times we see that a valve or a component or something is failing on a regular basis, but we don't have the authority to fix it, which means that the manufacturer specified that that valve, we can use that, is supposed to be right there, and that's the one that they spec'd out for that ride. If we were to change that valve to something else because it broke frequently, then we can cause more damage to other components and possibly reduce the ride safety factor if we did replace that valve. So we have to have the manufacturer sign off that we're replacing that valve with something different. Most of the time they won't do that. So you'd have to step in with your own parks engineering department and then they would have to say that it's okay to replace that valve with something else. In which case engineering's taking on that liability. They don't want to do that either. So if the valve is still available and the manufacturer is still around, they're going to tell you to use that same part, even though something better may be out there. It's very hard to change parts on rides with something that wasn't specified by the OEM manufacturer. Number three, they're dirty. They're very dirty. The underside of the train, very dirty. The track, very dirty. Track lube everywhere. Oil, dirt, grit, brass shavings, metal shavings, everything all over the place. The rides just are very dirty all over the place. The only place on a ride that is clean is the place where the guests sit. That's the cleanest place on the entire ride. Everywhere else, pretty dirty. We try to wipe things down and keep things clean underneath the train, but it is a constant uphill losing battle. Number two is that they're never quick to work on. Anytime a ride breaks down, it's down for at least a half an hour every time. Sometimes you might get something quick, but if it's a fault that doesn't happen that often, you go out there, you find out what the fault is, you maybe go out and inspect the components and see what's going on. You hit the reset, run it a couple times, test run it a couple times, and turn it back over to operations. They'll test run it a couple times, and by the time that's passed, it's been 30 to 45 minutes of downtime on that ride. And nobody likes that much downtime. Guests don't like it. Operators don't like it. The park doesn't like it. Nobody likes it. And that brings us to our number one, which is maintenance always gets a bad rap. Maintenance at never has the easy out on this one. Uh, some parks like to display that the ride's temporarily closed, but most of the time they put a picture of a wrench on that sign and say like temporarily closed and you see a picture of a wrench or a gear or something and everyone just says, oh, it's closed for maintenance. The ride's closed for maintenance. We would get upset at our park and we would we walk around and on days when they were short staffed, they would close smaller rides and just because they didn't have enough operators to run it. So when they closed those rides, they didn't put up a sign saying, sorry, we don't have the operational staff to run this, or sorry, we're gonna run this later. They would put up the sign that basically said the ride's being worked on right now. And the maintenance department would look like they did not know what they were doing because it just looked like there was broken down rides all over the park, when in fact that was not the case anywhere. We just get a bad rap constantly at amusement parks because they won't tell you what's actually wrong with the ride. So they just say, down for maintenance. What happened? Someone threw up. What's wrong with it? Well, it's down for maintenance. Someone threw up on it. Still down for maintenance. What happened? Someone got a bloody nose. 
oh, okay, so it's down for cleanup. It's like, oh, down for maintenance. But it's a bloody nose. It's still down for maintenance. And then for that, you walk around in the park and you say, people always come up to you and say, is the ride safe? And you say, yes, the ride's safe. It's my one and only job here to make this ride safe. So yes, this ride is safe. I don't know how else I can tell you about it. People still kind of look at you and go, hmm, I don't know. I don't think the ride's safe. It's like, well, thanks. That's, that's so great. That's a slap in my face. I appreciate that. But at the end of the day, they say, hey, is the ride safe? Yes, it is. Because, you know, a lot of times I would bring my kids to the park and we go ride on all the rides out there too. That's fun. Sometimes you have to make questionable calls, and that's the end, that's the leveler that I used for every call I made. If it was questionable, I would say, would my kids come here and ride this? Would I be okay with that? And if the answer was ever questionable in my mind, I ride did not open back up after that. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed my video. Top 10 things mechanics don't like about rides. And if you did, make sure you like and subscribe, maybe share it with somebody, doesn't matter to me. But I'd like to get, grow my channel a little bit if possible. Uh, I'm Ryan, the Ride Mechanic. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.